Now that you've been uh, told that you can use the computer for graphing, I'd like to show you how to use a program called Logger Pro, which will be provided to all of the students at Clayton High School. Um, <clears throat> and so once you have it installed on your computer, there will be an icon that looks something like this that you can click on in order to start up the program. When it starts up, you'll see that you get a blank graph and a blank data table. And the first thing that I want you to do, because we're going to make a pretty complicated data table over here ultimately, is to click on the graph, hit delete, so that you have just a data table page. Notice up here that we're on page one. And so I'm going to click on the data table. I'm going to grab one of these handles, and I'm going to spread the data table out a little bit so that we can add the other columns when we get there. Let's assume that the data we're creating is for the wheel and axle lab. And so I might decide to call this data set wheel and axle. Uh, maybe this is for the low incline. So I'm naming the data set so I can tell what it is when I look at it in the computer. And uh, if I were to make these columns wider, I might see the whole name. Once I add some extra columns, that whole name will come up there. Now in that wheel and axle experiment, our independent variable, which we conventionally put on the left side, was clock reading. So if we click, double click on X, we don't want to call that X because this column is our column for clock readings. So I'm going to call that clock reading. And the symbol we use for clock reading is a lowercase t. Let's assume I did my experiment uh, getting my units of time in seconds. In cases where the quantity, and this will norm normally happen with your independent variable, increases in some regular way by equal increments, you can use this generate values um, option. And in this case, I want to start at a clock reading of 0, end at a clock reading of 6, in increments of 1. If I now hit done, you'll notice that this column becomes t in seconds with 0 to 6 on there. If I expand this to where it's wide enough for the word clock reading to show up, the whole word word will be there, and if I <clears throat> shrink it down, I'll just see the symbol for it. I'm going to double click on this column again because I want to show you what you can do with the options command. One of the things you can do is to change your point symbol. We call these point protectors in this class. And typically the empty circle is going to be the one I want you to use. And I like your default color to be black. This will make it show up a lot better on black and white printers. If you're doing this in color, you can get away with the plethora of colors that are available to you here. But on a black and white printer, I highly recommend you stay with black. And then your displayed precision, I, rep re I recommend in this case that we go to the tenth of a um, second. Um, so the decimal places are going to be one. And when I click on that, it changes all of the values to the tenth of a second. The other um, value that we have in this graph would be uh, the other variable, which is our dependent variable, is position. So if I double click on that and go to column definition, I can change the Y to position. I can change the short name to X, and that's the symbol we use for position. Unfortunately, there's no way to put a, an arrow over the top of that, so we're going to be stuck with just the X, and we're going to measure that, let's say, in meters in this case. Now, this time, we're not going to use generate values because being the dependent variable, its value is going to vary uh, based on what clock readings we use. So we aren't going to use the generate values. We're going to go to options. We're going to change this red, which it automatically cho cho um, chose, to black. And we're going to go with decimal places manual to 1. Empty circle looks good. Medium. That all looks good. So when I click on that, it's got a column called position in meters. Now I'm going to type in the data. So if you click on the cell, you can type in the value. Um, and the values that I'm going to get are 0, 0.0. 0. I'm just going to put 0. It'll put it in as 0, 0. Um, I just hit return or enter, and it went down. But I had already 
told Logger Pro earlier that that's the way I wanted it to do it. So I want to show you how to do that. You go to the Logger Pro menu and select Preferences. Down here in the lower left is where you get a chance to tell it whether you want it to go down or right after you hit Enter. I think you're going to find in this class you're going to be entering columns of data rather than data points one at a time. So I recommend you change this to down. Once you set your computer to do that the first time, it's because these are application preferences, it's going to tend to do that every time. Also, if you make the file you're working on a startup file, it'll automatically default to all the stuff that you have there, although you'll probably want to take the data out of it because it'll look, it'll have the same data every time you start the computer. Um, once we have that taken care of, I don't think you need to worry about any of these other um, options that are in here for now. So now we're going to start putting in the rest of the data in the position column. So let's say at a clock reading of 1, I'm at a position of 5.0. At a clock reading of 2, I'm at a position of 20.0. At a clock reading of 3, I'm at a position of 45.0. At a clock reading of 4 seconds, I'm at a position of 80 meters. At a clock reading of 5 seconds, I'm at a position of 125 meters. And at a clock reading of 6 seconds, I'm at a position of 180 meters. Now we have a data table. We have places that we can add other columns, which we'll do in another um, video that follows this one. Now what we want to do is to make a graph of this. So right now we have but one page, and we don't have the option to go forward or backward because we only have one page. But if we come to the menu called Page, we can insert a page. That's with this Add a Page convention. We can also do some other modification of the pages there. But for right now, we want to add a page. And I suggest this first time, we're just going to make a blank page and not worry about any of these options after the current page makes sense. So we'll have the data table followed by the graph. So when I do that, I get a blank page. You might think, well, I lost my data table. But up here it says page 2. If I hit previous, it'll go to page 1. If I hit next, it'll go to page 2. And if I click in here, I can go directly to any page that I want by simply selecting it. So we're going to go to the graph, the page we're going to use for the graph. <clears throat> and in this case, we're going to use the insert command and tell it graph. Now, if we look at our data table page, you'll notice that clock reading was in the left column, position was in the right column. The computer is going to default to assume that whatever you put in the left column is your independent variable, and it'll plot that on the horizontal axis. And whatever you put in the right column is the dependent variable, and it'll put that on the vertical axis. So if we go to page 2, you'll see it did that. It put the position on the vertical axis because it was the dependent variable in the right column and clock reading on the x-axis or horizontal axis because it was in the left column which is the normal place for the independent variable. We're going to drag this graph larger because we're going to want to want it to fill up <clears throat> as much of the page as possible. And you'll notice that the graph it did go ahead and plot a bunch of lines on here but you can't see your data points, and there's a bunch of straight lines connecting what would be our data points. So we're going to have to make some modifications to this graph. It's very easy to do. We're going to double-click on the graph, so we're going to put our cursor somewhere on the graph. We're going to go to Graph Options, so it's the left tab. And the first thing we're going to do is to put in the title of this graph. And our convention is to put dependent variable, which in this case is position, versus independent variable, which in this case is clock reading. You want to always deselect connect points because we don't connect the dots in here. And we always do point protectors. And Logger Pro calls these things point symbols. And you really don't need anything else clicked here except the point symbols. Later on you might want to play around with tick styles because this can adjust how many lines it puts in the grid over here. If I do that and I hit OK, you'll notice that now I see the data points, but I don't have the connecting lines anymore. You could extend this a little beyond 6 so that you could see all of that point. And you could extend this a little bit below and to the left of those zeros if you wanted to see that whole point. 
but it would be fine if you left it like this. The next thing that you're going to do, and you could have done it while you were still, still had that up there, double click the graph. And this time, instead of looking at the graph options that we were looking at before, we're going to look at the axes options. Notice that there's a little rectangle up here on the upper left that goes with the y-axis. Anything that you do in here only affects the y-axis. There's another rectangle along the bottom here labeled x-axis. Anything you do here affects the x-axis. So the one thing that we almost always want you to do is on the scaling, select Auto Scale from Zero. Note that we just did that for the y-axis, and it has checked position as the quantity that's plotted on that axis. If I wanted clock reading to be plotted, I could uncheck this and check clock reading. That's not what we want. We want position. You could also plot both of these on that axis, but that actually doesn't make any sense here. On the horizontal axis, we want to plot clock reading, although we could have plotted position. We're going to keep it at position, or at clock reading, I'm sorry. And again, independent of what we did here on the y-axis, we're going to tell it to auto-scale this axis from zero. When we do so, we end up with, actually it did it before already for us, but this has already been auto-scaled to fit all of our data, and the x and y axes cross at zero, zero, which is what we want them to do. The last thing that we need to do is to put a curve fit on here. And when you did this by hand, you had to sketch in the curve here. If you click on curve fit, in this class, at least early on, about the only type of curve fit besides linear fits that you're going to do is what we call a power fit. So if you click on that and then select try fit, you'll notice that it gives you a nice curve that looks like it fits. So we're going to hit OK. And now we have a curve fit. I really don't want you to do anything with the information that's in this box. So I'm going to click on this, select, and by the way, when I clicked on it, I right-clicked on it. Um, if you don't have a two-button mouse or you don't have your Mac mouse set up that way, you can hold down the um, control button and click on it. It will give you the same thing. Curve fit options. I think I want you not to show this on the graph. So if you click on that, that will go away and you'll just see a curve of best fit. So that's how you plot a basic graph in Logger Pro. First of all, how you put the data in and then how you plot a basic graph. And once you have that done, you're ready to print it. So let me show you the last thing you need to know about this for printing. When you print graphs, you're going to want to go to File. And instead of selecting Print, you're going to, going to want to put Print Graph. When you do that, you want to put your name in there. So I'm going to put Mr. Rice, and I'm going to comment. I'm going to say something about the experiment. So this is going to be my wheel and axle experiment. We'd like you to always put the date on there and always include the um, page number on there. And you can decide whether you want the page title and file name to be on there. The other thing you want to do is always have it select print footer because I want to see your name and the date anytime you print on one of these. Once you've done that, the other thing that you're going to want to do is to, and I guess I actually should have shown you this first, I want you to go to File, Page Setup, and I want you to select the Landscape Mode. I want you to print it sideways on the page so that we fill up the page as much as possible. Once you've done that, then you can go back and do what I showed you before, which is print graph. It remembered the things I put in there before. The date is selected. Print footer is selected. If I hit OK, then a standard dialog box for printing will come up, and you can hit print. In this room, the default printer will be this Room 203 LaserJet printer, um, so you're not going to have to mess with that at all. Make sure that your graph is what you want it to be before you print so you don't waste paper or toner. So that's how we do graphs in Logger Pro. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to add calculated columns and complete an analysis like you would do for the wheel and axle experiment.